Can we turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 20 while we're standing? Acts chapter 20. Let's read from verse 7. Thank you very much. Acts chapter 20 from verse 7. I think I would like King James. That's what I sent you. King James version. Old King James. Yeah. All right. Now, I'm going to read first and then maybe you join me to read. Now, pay attention. We're standing for the reading of God's word. The Bible says, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech <laughs> until midnight. Do you understand what's going on here? Paul started preaching from morning, and he continued preaching till midnight. If we try that one in one service, so I have some time keep. I say, Pastor, time is about to finish. It's time for us to go. That's how the early church started, doing long preachings, long preachings. Look at the next verse, verse 8. And there were many lights in the upper chamber. Many theologians believe that this light was a supernatural light. It wasn't an ordinary light. And there were many lights in the upper room where they were gathered together. Verse 9. Everybody read, want to go. And they sat the window, a certain young man named, uh-huh, me falling into a deep sleep. Of course, what do you expect? Paul has been long preaching. And the Bible makes it very clear, it was long preaching. What happened to this guy? He sunk down with sleep. And I was taken up dead. You saw what happened? The, Paul was preaching. The guy went into deep sleep, fell down, and died. Look at verse 9. Read everybody. One, okay, verse 10 now. Read one to go. And Paul went down and fell on him. And embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. Why? Because Paul was the one that gave him life. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? The life from Paul entered into the man. And Paul said, the life is in him. Look at the verse 11. Now read one to go. Uh-huh. The broke bread, uh-huh. And eat. And talked a long while, even until what? So that commercial break did not stop the preaching of the gospel. I hear what I'm telling you? It didn't stop it. The guy kept on preaching. It was just an addendum. You know, some people, if that happened, that would have been the end of the meeting. They start saying, wow, a dead man came back to life. Paul just went to raise the guy back to life and continued his preaching and teaching of the gospel. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something this morning? Get ready for the supernatural. Get ready for the overflow. I hear what I'm telling you. Listen, don't come to church and say, Pastor, just preach on me like a loaf of bread inside hot water. Don't stand like a pillar of salt and looking like the first lady of emergency. I hear what I'm telling you. When God's word comes to you, respond. Everybody say respond. Well, I, if, 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 if what you want to respond is a shout, release that shout. If it's tongues that come out, release that tongue. If it's to stand up and jump, stand up and jump. Are you hearing me? Don't tie your leg and your bum bum to the chair. And you stay like a log of wood. Listen, supernatural not really get that time. Huh? If you just waste time, it'll pass by you and move to the next person. Are you hearing me? So don't look at your neighbor and how your neighbor is behaving. Mm -mm. It is your time to receive the supernatural. I hear what I'm telling you. Now lift your hands. Say, I heal the sick. Say, I raise the dead. Say, miracles not tire Jesus. Miracles not tire me. Say, you, 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 you guys are playing on me this morning. Say, I heal the sick. Say, I raise the dead. Say, miracles not tire Jesus. Miracles not tire me. Say, miracles not tire Jesus. Miracles not tire me. There are some of you in this place. They are about to put miracle in front of your name. They say, miracle Daniel. Miracle Yinka, Miracle John, Miracle Confidence. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? If you believe that word this morning, throw your hands up and shout, Thank you, Jesus. Get ready for the supernatural. Tell five people, Get ready for the supernatural. Give me that symbol as well. Get ready for the supernatural. 
Tell five people, get ready for the supernatural. Something is going to shift in your life. Things are going to happen. Things are going to happen. It will be the supernatural supply of the Spirit. It's the lavish supply of the Spirit. If that is your word this morning, throw your hands up and shout amen, somebody. Oh, glory to God. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for the word of God. Thank you for your word of your grace, which is able to make us what you want us to be. And Father, today we are ready to receive of that drink of that gospel in the name of Jesus. Shout amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Are you ready for God's word? Are you ready for the gospel? You know, I don't know if you ever lived in Lagos and you meet all these Molue guys. Hey, stay there. You guys should just stay there. <laughs> okay, thank you. How many of you have been to this Molue? <laughs> this Molue guys, where while you are traveling, or I don't know if you do it in Yola too, you meet all these guys who have this, they just stand up in the middle of the night and say, Everybody, we get one drug. We feel solve cancer, we feel solve diabetes. It can cure HIV. It can solve leg problem, arthritis, and all those things. And then some people fall for that and buy the drug. <laughs> How many of you have seen that kind of thing before? You heard about it before? Yes. So there are people who fall for it. But you see, God gave us a pill. It is called God's pill. And that God's pill is what we call the gospel. The gospel is that one drug of God that can change everything about your life. When you understand the gospel, that gospel is enough to solve headaches, to solve financial issues, to solve any kind of problem that could ever be in your life. Whether it's a money problem, the gospel is the answer. It is that one pill of God that can solve everything about your life. You know, those of us that grew up when we were younger... How many of you grew up where when you had injury, your mother will carry ori? No ori. Everything ori. Headache, they rub ori. They, what they call in English, shea butter. It's as though that shea butter can solve almost any kind of problem for a child. You think God is not wise? That God can put all that you need in one message, in one gospel? And that is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can you say Amen. So God is very wise. He is the power. He is the, he, he, he is the power of the powerful. And God puts the gospel as the meal that the church needs to keep serving every day, every night, every moment. Because when you think you don't have resources, you don't need a financial conference. What you need is the gospel. When you are seeking your body, what you need is the gospel. When you are going through hard times in your life, what you need is the message of the gospel about what Christ has done. Whether somebody is sick, what he needs is the gospel. And everything is locked up in the gospel. Look at Acts chapter 20 verse 32. Look at what Paul said. Paul said, so now brethren, I commend you to God that is the word of his grace. That's the word and in the Greek. That is the word of his grace. Which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Can you give me this verse in uh, maybe Message Bible? Let's see what he says there. In Message Bible. Acts 20, 32. You guys should be very fast. All right. Can we all read together, everybody? One to go. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody, see what we say. The gospel is the wisdom of God. Say it louder. Say the gospel is the wisdom of God. When Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus, there were other Lazarus that died in that tomb. All that Jesus had to say was, Lazarus, come forth. And the gospel knew which Lazarus, which person to bring out of that grave. Can I tell you this something this morning? I may not know everything that is happening in your life. I may not even call your situation, but the gospel knows what you're going through. The gospel knows what you're passing through. And the gospel will bring the answer to what you require. 
They don't hear the testimony of this people they are sharing the testimony today. It was just, all they heard was the message of the gospel. You know, some of you, when this guy was sharing testimony, you were just, you, you, you think it's a joke testimony. Somebody says his target is 2 million and he did 15 million. Maybe because you don't run a business, that's why. If, if an employee target is 2 million and then he delivered 15 million, you think it's normal? Tell somebody saying, I grace they run my life. <laughs> say, grace runs my life. That's my engine. Somebody say, how you get it? Grace. You think it's normal? Two million to 15 million. That's a powerful testimony. Very, very powerful testimony. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. As the gospel is being shared, you are being healed. Doors are being opened. I thought you say amen. Things are happening in your, in your home. Things are happening in your business. Just receiving the gospel of Jesus Christ. That construction that you're doing. That work. That project. Whatever it is. Whether it's a healing, a child, an open door. It's in the gospel. Hallelujah. And what is the gospel? I've taught you. What is the gospel? The gospel is the message of his death, his burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. So what is the gospel? When he died, he died for me. When he died, he died as me. When he was buried, I was buried with him. When he was raised up, I was raised together with him. Now I am seated in heavenly places far above principalities and powers and every other name that is named. Can we say it together? What is the gospel? When he died, he died for me. When he died, he died as me. Say it again. When he died, he died for me. When he died, he died as me. When he was buried, say I was buried together with him. Some of you are looking at me like a pillar of salt. I said, talk, you, you, talk, in, you talk in Jesus' name. Are you ready now? I'm teaching you the gospel. So you, you, you have to know it at the snap of your finger. Is that okay? Now, uh, let me, let's do this before, before we sit together. Now, say, when he died, he died for me. When he died, he died as me. When he was buried, I was buried together with him. When he was raised, I was raised together with him. Say, now I am seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above principalities and powers and every other name that is named. Glory. If you catch it, your life will never be the same again. If you catch that one message, your life will never be the same again. Say, Christ is in me. Say it again. Say, Christ is in me. Say, I'm seated together with Christ. So the, so the gospel is a message about a person. It is not Easter message. It is not Christmas message. You know, let me tell you something. No matter how wrong a church is, they are right two times in a year. Even a clock that is not working is right two times in a day. <laughs> if it's 4 p.m., it's stop. 4 a.m. and 4 p.m. will catch it. In the same way, no matter what the church is teaching, eh, they are right twice in a year. Easter and Christmas. Because on Christmas Day, they are forced to teach about Jesus. On Easter, they must teach about Jesus. By fire, by force. But that's what we talk about here every day. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So the gospel is not a side dish. It's the main course. It is the main menu. If, are you hearing what I'm saying? Now look at Romans 10 verse 14 now. Romans 10 14. He said, how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So the gospel is about a whom. Are you seeing that? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard. Now look at the next one. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? After salvation, the next most important thing is your preacher. The church you go to. Because that person can still take you back to bondage. If you are not careful. After salvation, the next most important thing is the church you attend and the pastor that is preaching to you every day. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? So the gospel is about a whom. So the job of the preacher is to bring you to the whom. So make sure that that is what he's doing Sunday after Sunday. Showing you about Jesus. Telling you of who you are in Christ. 
that is what the preacher is supposed to be doing. Glory to God. You can be saved and the preacher can take you back into bondage. My screen is not working here. Acts, uh, Romans 10, 14. I want to read the next verse. So you cannot, you can, listen, let me tell you something. Hmm? You cannot, you can have a miracle service and Jesus is not there. Because it is not miracles that validate whether Jesus is there or not. Look at what the Bible says. Let's continue the scripture. Hello, are you still in this place? I said, are you still in this place? I told you last week Sunday, I said, with all due respect to Jesus, Moses had more miracles than Jesus. Did I tell you that last week? Yes, we're in church. Moses had more miracles than Jesus. But Hebrews tells us that Moses is a servant. Jesus is a son. So when you're talking about who is greater and who is better, Jesus is greater than Moses. Jesus is better than Moses. Hallelujah. He says, and how shall they preach except they be sent? And as it's written, how beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel of peace, that bring glad tidings of good things. Verse 16. He says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. Verse 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah, talking about Isaiah, Isaiah is Hebrew, Isaiah is Greek, same name. He says, Lord, who had believed our report? What is, what is the writer talking about? Remember Isaiah 53? He said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. That the chairman of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. He was talking about a whom. So Isaiah was talking about a whom, even in the Old Testament. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So now, then he says, so then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing about the whom. Are you catching it now? It is when you hear about this whom who was bruised, who was wounded, talking about after Jesus died. When he was buried, after he came out of the grave, he says, that whom is what inspires faith to the believer. So it's not everything in the word of God that brings faith to you. Somebody say, just hear the word. No, it's not everything in the word. It's the me Give me Message Bible. Romans 10, 17. Message Bible. Romans 10, 17. Just the point is, I did this last week. You guys should have these things ready now. Huh? Be quick, be quick. Can you all see it on the screen? I want you to see the last one. Hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, give me it from the point is. Romans 10, 17, Message Bible. Can you all see it? I don't know if you have sharp eyes. You have sharp eyes? All right, let's do it together. From the point is, want to go read? The point is, uh-huh. Uh-huh. There's what? Read it again. One to go. All right, Second Corinthians eleven four. Now listen very carefully. The whom that is preached determines the spirit that it has worked in the place. When you want to know the spirit that is at work in a church, look at the message that they are teaching and preaching. Because the message determines the spirit at work in the place. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4. 2 Corinthians 11 4. What's going on? Is it that you guys are slow or the system is slow? What's going on? All right. Read everybody. Want to go? Hey, some of you don't keep quiet. I told you don't keep quiet on me. Read want to go. So there's another Jesus. Continue. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. So that means there is a different Jesus which determines the different spirits, which also determines the different gospel. Are you seeing that? He said, which you have not received. What did he say? He says, you may well put up with you. That means throw it away. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? So the Jesus that is preached determines the spirit that is at work in the place. The time is the gospel, and the time is there's another gospel. Everybody say we are preaching the gospel. It's not true. There are some people are preaching another gospel. There are different kinds of gospel, but there's only one true gospel: the gospel of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Any other gospel that is not talking about Him is not the true gospel. It's a fake gospel. Any gospel that tells you if God wants to bless you, bring something to God, fake gospel. 
Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Any gospel that's not about what, what, what he has done is fake. It's not the true gospel. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Because after Jesus, there's nothing else to say. If you think I'm joking, Matthew 24, 24. Look at what the Bible said. Look at what Jesus said by himself. He says, for false Christ and false prophets will rise and show what? Great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Thank God they can't deceive the elect. Thank God. But you see, these guys are not in Christ. They are, they are false prophets, but they do miracles. So miracles does not validate the gospel. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? It is the message that validates. Look at 2 Thessalonians 2.9. He says, the coming of the lawlessness one is according to the power, according to the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying tongues, lying wonders. Look at it there. It's right there in the scripture. That's the reason why everybody said the devil is a liar. Shalala said the devil is a liar and he cannot stand truth. So you see, Satan has signs and wonders. Are you hearing me? If you think it's a joke, <laughs> when Moses came to meet Pharaoh, when Pharaoh said, what do you have? He said, I have power now. He took his rod, threw it on the floor. The rod turned to snake. When he did it, do you realize the Magicians were laughing? Eh? You know why? It is something they are doing every day. It's their normal thing to do. Turn rod to snake, ah, normal. So they had wonders. They had signs. They had power. So when Moses did his own, they took their own rod too. They threw it on the floor. They want to turn to snake. Pharaoh was laughing. But there's somebody say, power past power. When Bible says, when Moses' rod went for the snake, he ate all their rods. Do you know why? Do you know what that signifies? Remember, every magician in Egypt, his power is in his rod. That is his scepter. If he does not have the rod, his office, his ministry is ended. So Moses ended their ministry. So when the rod entered the ground and Moses' rod ate their rod, Moses said, bye-bye to your ministry. Your ministry is over because power passed power. Are you hearing me? Because God is the all-powerful. He is the he is, Bible says we are both principalities and power. He is the one that is the most powerful. Glory to God. I said, hallelujah. All power in heaven and on earth belongs to Jesus. So they were out of business from that day and spot because their staff is called the scepter. Listen very carefully. The the raw, the scepter is the gospel. The gospel is the scepter of God. How do you bring out the gospel from the story of Esther? When Esther was about to meet the king, they told her, if the king does not invite you and you're going, you are going to die. Except the king raises the scepter. When she entered, he said, if I die, I die. The Bible says when she entered that place, the king raised his scepter. What does that signify? And she did not receive judgment. What does that say about us? Jesus is the scepter of God. When God raised his scepter, judgment was freed from our lives forever. Shout amen somebody. The gospel is the scepter of God. So because God raised his scepter, we will never face judgment. Glory to God. We have avoided the judgment of the palace. I'm preaching this morning. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. If not for that scepter, Esther would have died. That day. She will have died. But that is the message. Jesus is our scepter. I said Jesus is our scepter. Look at that story we're reading in the book of Acts. What was Paul preaching? That the crippled man still stood up. Last week I showed you. Paul was preaching forgiveness of sins. Acts 14 verse 7. Acts 14 verse 7. Sorry, give me verse 8 first. Verse 8 first. Verse 8. Up. Okay. Read everybody want to go. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. What was Paul saying? Verse 7. Read, everybody want to go. Read it again, everybody want to go. Can I tell you something? I prophesied with somebody this morning. As you leave this service today, you are going to receive emails. You are going to receive text messages. You are going to receive phone calls of blessings. I hear what I'm telling you. If you like, if this is not your word, no problem. You can come next week Sunday. But if this is your word this morning, say I receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. The gospel knows what to fix in your life. Where you have been trying to reach. Once you hear the gospel, the gospel will take you there. Hallelujah. It will take you there. You know, <laughs> there is no problem of your life 
that is bigger than the gospel. You know, somebody say, you know, uh, this episode that church, they 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 be one kind problem where they go face, they go go bush. They have to they go go bush. Let me ask you a question. You have gone to bush. Your mother went to bush. Your grandmother went to bush. How far? The thing is not still working. Don't it tell you that that thing know they work? It has not done on you yet. Hmm? You don't need anything. You keep entering bush, bush all the time as if you're a bushman. Say I'm a grace man. <laughs> Say I'm a grace man. Because, listen, just Jacob was in the house. Esau was inside bush. Hustling, hustling. Jacob, hmm, he did not do anything. He was just, tell somebody there's something in the house. Grace just located that guy inside the house. The guy was just there inside the house. The mother said, it's time to get some blessing. He did not even cook the food. Are you full? Esau was there struggling, toiling, working hard to get food. The guy did not cook any food. He just wear the brother coat, just go meet the father. The father say, ah, you are blessed above everybody. They receive all the blessings, nothing remain. How about, tell somebody there's grace in the house. There's no grace in the bush. I hear me, stop going to the bush. Stay with the gospel. Be planted in the house of God. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Tell somebody, come off a bush. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Can I tell you something? And Jacob, listen, I, I, I am Jacob too. Enjoying that kind of grace. Little effort, great result. I prophesied to somebody today, you will put in little effort and get great result this year. The little effort you put in will bring great results in the name of Jesus. Yes, the, the Jacob story is my experience. I'm telling you. I walk from a place of grace. Glory to God. The supernatural comes with the gospel. Look at Acts 4.13. Acts 4.13. The supernatural comes with the gospel. The Bible says, Therefore, they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness. What was he bearing witness to? The word of his grace. As they were preaching the grace of God, what happened next? He granted them signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Did you just see that in your Bible? Mark 2, 5. You know, one time, tell somebody say stubborn faith. Jesus was doing a, a service in, like, in a room like this. There was no space for anybody to walk through. So there was this guy. Huh. He was lying flat, laying. So they had to go to the roof to push him inside the building. So, they imagine, they imagine this room and they break roof to enter. So, they brought the guy and land him here. So, when Jesus saw the guy who was on the on lying flat, you know what Jesus said to him? When Jesus saw their faith, what did he say? What was his message to them? He said, he said to the paralytic, he says, son, we know I called him son. The guy never see Jesus was ad addressing the identity issue. He went to the root of the problem. What produced the paralysis in his body was that the guy did not know he was his son. So he says, Son, he says, Your sins are forgiven you. Because the guy was dealing with the root cause condemnation. That is why we preach the gospel. And once he did that, he did not say you are healed, he just said, Rise up and walk. And the guy just stood up and started walking. All that Jesus preached was the gospel. Shout amen to somebody. I said, shout amen to somebody. Yes, glory to God. You know what? The guy came through the roof, but he went through the door. Oh, can I provide somebody this morning? They, they may have told you there's no space, but they'll create space for you. That place that was too tight, you will walk through the door. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? That company may have told you they've, the application is closed. Nobody can come in anymore. But you will be the one that they will open the door for. If you believe it, shout amen somebody. Yes, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say, I'm walking in the supernatural. Say, doors and gates are being opened for me. Say, I'm walking in the supernatural. Say, doors and gates are being opened unto me. Look at Acts 14, 3 from TPT. He says, yes, yet Paul and Barnabas stayed there for a long time, preaching boldly and fearlessly about the Lord. Uh-huh. What were they preaching? 
many trusted in the Lord. What did God do? Ha. For he backed up his message of what? Shout it louder. The message of what? With what? With miracles, signs, wonders performed by the apostles. It is the message of his grace that produces the supernatural. Say I'm a sign. Say I'm a wonder. Shout it louder. Say I'm a sign. Say I'm a wonder. Tell your neighbor, stay planted in the gospel. Tell them there's nothing you are looking for outside. Stay planted. You know, if you remove a plant from this place today, you take it here tomorrow, you remove it again. The plant will still be alive. But what happens? It will not grow. It will grow to be stunted because it doesn't have deep root. It's not planted in the place. And the Bible says, they that are planted in the house of the Lord shall do what? Shall flourish like the palm tree. Not they that move around. Not they that move around. Stop moving around. Are you hearing me? Stay planted in the gospel because it will hinder your growth. Acts 13 43. I'm showing you how the supernatural is being produced. Read everybody want to go. And when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and devoted paralysis followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them, they begged them. They said, Continue in the grace of God. Don't go outside and go and change the message. That means the message that got the unbeliever saved is the same message that needs to be taught to the believer to stay grounded in the gospel. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes. The message does not change. You know, there are some pastors who cannot preach the gospel. Huh? There are some like that. Men like that. They can't teach the gospel. How can you open a restaurant for us? The first day you did the lunch for the restaurant, you gave us shaki. A body, tongo, which one again? You now put, you now put roundabout. Man, that roundabout is solid. That roundabout talks about the gospel. The gospel goes round. Hallelujah. Roundabout. Then you now put amala inside with a wedu and soup. You now pour all this shaki meat inside. That before you even reach the amala, oh boy, that food just too sweet. Eh? Then you now serve it with beta vegetable, beta dessert. And uh, which one again? Appetizer. Pepper soup with goat meat. That's what you served us on the day of the opening. Then we came one week after. You serve us, Gary. Scam! That restaurant is a scam. Um, is, that, is that not true? That's what happened in many of our churches. The day the guy got sick, that is even for those that preach the gospel. Oh, because they are people that give threat message. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you will die. And you will go to hell. That's threat message. The gospel is not a threat message. The gospel is a love letter. Because it is the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? <laughs> so, he said, he said, I've seen something like that. Brother, brother, today I must win a soul. Have you heard that, that skit before? Today I must win a soul. He said, guys, today I must win a soul. The guy went on the street and he saw one brother. He said, brother, you must be saved today. The guy said, I know one here. He said, brother, the violence take it by fire, by force. We, we, he started fighting, you know. He said, today you must go to church. <laughs> you know what happened to the guy's church? Only him and his wife first service. One month after, only him and his wife second service. <laughs> they, they all the service, only him and his wife in the church. He said, today I must win the soul. He went with threat message. That is not the gospel. Hallelujah. So on the first day I came to church, you preached to me the gospel. You gave me all those nice food. Then I entered. You say, if you sin any anyhow, the way God will deal with your case, it will be so bad. You know, I heard of a pastor. Eh? <laughs> the woman had three months pregnancy. She lost the pregnancy. This now happened to be in the month of January. Then she now to tell her pastor that she lost a three months pregnancy. And the pastor said to her, do you give your first fruit this month? She said, no. He said, that's it. That's why. That's why he lost the pregnancy. From that day, she stopped going to church. That if God can be this wicked, that because of first fruits, I lose pregnancy, there's no point staying with this God. You know, let me tell you the line. If you want to bear fruit, give your first fruits. See the line? Tell somebody the gospel is not a threat message. 
manipulating people just to get money out of them. First fruit. He said, bring, even the Bible talks about first fruit. He didn't say bring all. He said, bring some. That's what he said. He said, not say bring all your salary. If you can afford to do it, fine. If that's what God told you, fine. But if God told you that, that is for you, not for everybody. I hear I'm telling you. There are many times God has told me to give everything. I've done it. My wife told the same. But I will not come and say, brothers and sisters, there is this anointing for all. It is the all anointing. If you want God to give you the all, bring the all. Mm -hmm. I hear Listen, we shall be do this, you know. If I want to raise, if I want to empty all your bank accounts, I know what to tell you now. You will just start dropping money here now. I'll raise all the money we need for our August program. I did tell you, I did tell you, we are experts in it. If it's to do that thing. Have you seen where pastors will come together in the church? The sharing formula, 60-40. They will invite guest minister. Okay, some of you, you know, you are still new in this church thing. We will have seen this thing. They will arrange. Past, guest minister will say, 60 40. So we come to the church, raise the money, all the church pay to the church account. After this, I will say, Pastor, eh? That's the 40 no go work. Oh. I'll give you like 10. You know, say we have church problem. We have a lot of financial needs in our church. That's where the problem will start. You start hearing fights. That's where we start knowing about the story. <laughs> oh my God. Kalandums ke frantalabali ko farabaya. Listen. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. I hope you know that what I'm teaching does not favor me economically. I hope you know that. Uh, it's not favor me, I mean, but it will favor me and will favor the gospel. Because one day I will stand before the Lord Jesus and he will ask me, what did you teach? Are you hearing me? So I want to get my crown. So I will not manipulate the Bible just to get money out of your pocket. If God is leading you to give, go ahead and do it. If we need money, I will come and ask you, brother, we need money to do in fact, this church, we need money. Is that okay? I've told you now. We need plenty of money. So give. Don't be waiting for us to say, Bora, come and give. Or say, if you want some dangerous anointing today, you need to do some dangerous seed. Don't wait for that. You will never yet in this church. So give. Tell somebody to give. Be a generous giver. Because you want to see the kingdom of God move forward. That's why we give. We give because we love the Lord. We want to see his kingdom move forward. Is that okay? I said, is that okay? I said, is that okay? You know, so the guy got saved, the unbeliever. You gave him shaki with amala, with all the nice soup, all the nice food. When he now entered church, you now gave him squid game. If he just missed, kwa, ku, ku, kwa. that's what the guy don't go. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Give him a squid game for church. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the guy, the guy now said, oh boy, this God there. Eh? If you just misbehave, he cuts you off. And then I read that John 15 verse 1. Any branch in me that does not bear fruit, he will cut off. But we we, we took our time to study the Bible. Not getting angry with us. When we studied the Bible, it did not say cut off. It said we lift up. Any branch. Have you ever seen a grape, a grape plant, a grape vine? You know, sometimes the stem are not that strong. They can go on the floor. So any, any wise farmer goes to his farm. He sees the vine not bearing fruit. What does he do? He will lift up the vine so that it can bear fruits. That's what I've said. Hello, somebody. I said, hello, somebody. <laughs> Stop preaching your experience on the stage. Mm -mm, stop it. Don't use your experience as a doctrine. That's why it is called your experience. Not our experience. God told you in the middle of the night that you should give all your car, give all your house. You know, tell the church, God said we should give all our house and give all the car. Is that what God told everybody? God told you, you do it. And God will reward you for your obedience. Is that okay? I said, is that okay? Yes, it is your dream, not our dream. Is that okay? Yes, it is your word, not our word. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Yes, glory to God. So I will teach the truth. And I will teach the truth only. It may not probably me now, but it will probably me when I meet Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Yes, glory to God. But I will not tie to one dangerous thing to move God. Somebody say, let's show some dangerous thing to move the hand of God. You, you, you want to move God. You. How much money do you even have in the first place? That you think you can move God. When Jesus died, how much money do you give for Jesus to move on your behalf? When he died for your sins. Where were you? You cannot move God. Tell your neighbor, you are the one that needs to move. 
Tell your neighbor, you are the one that needs to move. God is not hungry. Eh? The Bible says, the cattle in a thousand hill belongs to who? To me. So God is not hungry. Listen, I may not be one of the top apostles in the city. I know what I'm telling you. But the one who marks the script is coming one day. He will check what we are preaching and teaching. Is that okay? Don't be moved by what men say. Mm, don't be moved by those things. Success to men does not translate to success to God. It depends on the instruction that God has given to you. Shout the man somebody. Look at Acts 13 43 from TPT. He says, when the meeting had finally broken up, many of those attendants, both Jews and converted to Judaism, tagged along with, with, with Paul and Barnabas, who continued to persuade them to do what? To go deeper. Into what? Into the understanding of God's grace. So when we come to church, what we do is to go deeper into the grace of God. We go deeper in grace, not go outside of grace. Is that okay? Though, you, know, you know, there are some of you here, you still write with pen and paper. I admire you a lot. Because it's our generation now, now mobile phone. Now we don't even know whether you are typing the message, whether you are tweeting, or whether you are whatsapping. We don't even know what you are doing. Someone said that digital notes. It's okay. I'm not arguing with you. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. You know, somebody say, No, some of them will say, No, grace not for babies, not for baby Christian. When you become mature, you need another message. No, the message for the baby is the message for the matured. The same message. Hallelujah. So we don't start in the grace of God and start entering into mysteries. So let's enter into some mysteries in the spirit. Let's go into some dimensions. Let's open some portals. Let's go to the courts of heaven. That is blah, blah, blue. Blue, blue, blah. Different. The gospel, different. The gospel, different. Let's go to the corridors of heaven. All that is blah, blah, blue. Blue, blue, blah. Blah, blue, 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 blah, blah, blue, blah. That's what he might do. <laughs> First Peter 5, 2. <laughs> Read verse 2. Everybody want to go, but hold on. By Sivanus, Sivanus here is the same word for Silas. Is that okay? Paul and Silas, Sivanus, Sivanus is Hebrew, Silas is Greek. It's just like I heard one pastor say, You know, God, you know, this is I guess some people say that when, when, when Saul was a sinner, his name was called Saul. After he got converted, God changed his name to Paul. Lie, everybody say, Lie. Saul is Hebrew, Paul is Greek. Then they now turn into a message. God will bring your Paul out of your soul. Oh boy. Lie. Some of you will shock you. It's the same, it's the same name. The same name. Let me show you Acts 13 9. Just for some of you, so I can give somebody the same name, no different. Acts 13 9. Give me on the screen. Go to the next scripture you see there. Acts 13 9. After this, yeah. Read everybody want to go. Uh-huh. It was also what called what? So he told you that the Saul and Paul are the same name. Paul is like Mary. It's like um, Joy and Ayo. Do you understand? In Yoruba, Joy and Ayo. It's like Mary and Martha. Mary, Martha, Miriam. They are all the same name. Maria, bitterness. You are, you are carrying the name Mary, Martha, um, uh, what the, all these names. Some of you, eh, if your parents give you a bad name, when you grow up, Google your name. Check the meaning. If the meaning does not make sense to you, change your name. Once you're over 18 years, you have the right to go and change your name. I tell everybody from this day henceforth, stop calling me bitterness. My name is not Mary anymore. Is that okay? Some of you are naming children until you not Google the name. Say, my grandfather gave me this name. My mother gave me this name. I'll give my child this name. Go and check the name. Go and check the name. Don't give your children terrible names. You know that in the Bible, somebody gave his child disease and sickness. In the Bible, I wish I I'll show you the scripture. The mother called the children disease. The other one, she called him sickness in their language because of the pain she went through during pregnancy. <laughs> what a life. Let's go back to 1 Peter 5 2, 12. 1 Peter 5 12. Let's go, let's go, let's go. No, give me from New King James first. I was not done reading that one. All right. Read everybody want to go. Our faithful brother, as I consider him, I have written to you briefly, exalting and testifying that this is the true grace. Uh -uh. 
Read it again, everybody. One to go. So that means if you are not standing in grace, you are not standing at all. Are you seeing the scripture? Give me a message Bible. Message Bible. Now you see, now he don't change the name now to Sivanus to Silas. The same name. I'm writing this brief letter to you, Silas. A most dependable brother. I have the highest regard for him. I have written as all gently and accurately as, I've, as I know how. This is God's general truth. Embrace it with your both hands. Are you seeing that? I said, are you seeing that? Now, listen. Everybody is not called into the fivefold ministry, but everybody is called into ministry. Now, what are the fivefold ministry? Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. These are the five. What does the apostle? Apostle is the strongest finger. Are you? Are you I'm telling you, it's the strongest finger. Prophet, the speaking finger. Um, evangelist talks about outreach. Pastor, married to the church. Do you understand? Then, teacher, for your ear to search the teachings of God. That's what the five offices represent. But everybody is called into ministry. You may not be called into any of these offices, but you are called into ministry. Are you hear what I'm telling you? So the question is, what ministry are you called into? You are called into the ministry of reconciliation. Say together with me, say, I am called into the ministry of reconciliation. Now question, what does it mean to be a minister? Let's, let's answer that question. What does it mean to be a minister? For instance, if I ask Collins now, what does it mean to be a producer? He will tell me this, 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 this. If I ask Courage, what does it mean to be a singer? He can tell me the 10 things I need to do to become a singer. Are you following? If I, if I ask a videographer, I said, what does it mean to be a videographer? They can tell me exactly. If I ask maybe here and I say, what does it mean to be a chef? He can tell me what he needs to be a chef. So question, what does, what what does it mean to be a minister? Acts 20, 24. Acts 20, 24. Acts 20, verse 24. All right. Now, pay attention. But none of these things move me. Nor do I count myself dear to myself so that I may finish my race with joy. And the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus, what is that ministry? To testify to the gospel of what? What does it mean to be a minister? To testify of the gospel of the grace of God. Say it again, everybody. What does it mean to be a minister? So when you are a pastor and you cannot teach the grace of God, problem D, it's like a pilot. Somebody says he's a pilot. He says, oh, come and fly the plane. He can't tell you, say, I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> Brother, give somebody else that license because you have no business being a pilot. It's like somebody say, I want to be a surgeon, a medical doctor, but a surgeon. And when the guy see chicken blood, just chicken blood, so when you now enter surgical room, what will happen to the patient? You better look for pharmacy or some other thing. Not or what? Or not. You are afraid of blood. You can't be a doctor. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. I'll tell you something of a driver. There was a driver. Somebody wanted to hire the driver for his mother. So the driver came for an interview. And I said, oh, when it comes to driving, there's nothing like, let's talk. Let's do pra practical. So you say, yeah. Enter Cali, let's go. You see, I reverse, let's go. You guys say, ah, reverse is not my thing. Ah, so that's problem. So that means when he now hire this guy now as his, uh, as the driver or for the mother, what will now happen? <laughs> when the mother gets to the place where they need to reverse, she will now be the one to now become the driver. Then he will now sit behind. That one is not a driver. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Uh -huh. So, it's not just with the pastor. So the question is, there, this is the same way with some pastors. They cannot reverse you from the law and take you into grace. Wrong drivers. Instead, you come to the church, they still take you back to the law. Back to the law. You must do these things. They, they want to assess God with five steps to assess God. 
you want God to bless you, the tenth you do to God to bless you. Take you back to the Lord. Those are bad drivers. Hallelujah. They are supposed to take you and enter into the gates of grace. Hallelujah. The city of our living God. Show glory to God. Now, the problem is not just with the pastor too. It is also with the people who are listening. The people to themselves. They are also the problem too. You sit down there. Somebody is teaching error. You sit down there. It's not seeing the grace of God. You sit down there and you say, mm, 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 mm. You will say, mm. Word. You say, word. Rema. You are the problem too. Then you put your mother with that driver. And when they tell you accident happened, will you be surprised? How can you now put your destiny in that kind of church or that kind of pastor that is not taking you away from the law and showing you the grace of God? And you think your life will be okay? And you think the end of it will be fine? Something is wrong somewhere. So ask your neighbor, what are you doing there? Today you will come to every other church. Tomorrow you will go to another church. Then you will go next to another place and say, I need to balance it. Like though you are balanced younger. You need to balance it. You jump from one place to the other. You hear nonsense. Then when you come to me, you know, say, ah, Pastor T, ah, that man, he can dissect the word. He can teach the word. He will break it down for you to understand. That's, why we, that's, that's the class you put us in. <laughs> oh my God, you are in trouble. You are in big trouble. And someone says, Pastor, you know, it's our family church. So I have to keep going there. That's the church my great-grandfather went to. My great my grandfather went to, my father went to, so I have to continue in the church. And you know they are teaching, what they are teaching is not the grace of God. But say, you know, but you know, Pastor, you know, you have to understand it's our family church. Let me ask you a question. If you have an auntie that owns a restaurant, then you went there, then what they served you, the rice, the, the rice is too much inside the salt. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. If you understand, the rice is more than the salt. Will you now sit down there and say, It's my auntie now, make a just chop? What will you do? You will support her from a distance. How come when it comes to your destiny, you don't support from a distance? How come? You are playing with your eternity. So I say, hey, But pastor, my father is a pastor. So I have to be my father's church because my father is a pastor. When you come before Jesus, Jesus will ask you, is your father a pastor? Is that a question we ask you? No, 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 no. It's you. You alone. You will stand for yourself. If your father, who is a pastor, is not teaching the grace of God, it is time to find a church that teaches the grace of God only. And support your father like that your auntie who served you rice and salt. It's not rice and stew. Rice and salt. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why are you sentimental with your destiny? Why? Why are you flirting with the law? Why are you doing that? The Bible says we should go deeper into the grace of God. He said we should stand in the grace of God. So we should testify of the gospel of the grace of God. What Christ has done for us. Hallelujah. Now there is this other group. They say, hey, Pastor, we need to teach the whole counsel of God. We need to teach the whole counsel of God. What is the counsel of God? Acts 20, 24. Okay, well, I've read this one, right? Now read again, everybody want to go. Please read, please read this morning. We're teaching Bible. Read, want to go. Move me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what Paul was teaching, right? He said, my job is to teach what? The gospel of what? Of the grace of God. Now, see, I taught you in this church, if you attended 12 Day Vibes, I had a series two months. Or to, to, mew, mew. What does it mean? Rightly dividing the word. When you want to interpret scripture, you don't just take one verse and interpret. You go to the pretext and you go to the post text. Are you following? Then you need to ask yourself, to whom is he writing it to? For what reason? For what purpose? That's where you can now understand the scripture. Now, we are going to do proper, rightly dividing the word now. Are you ready for that now? Now, jump down to verse 27. The same chapter, the same chapter, 27. Read everybody, want to go? Uh-huh. What is the whole counsel of God? The gospel of the grace of God. 
That's the whole counsel of God. Next chapter. Ne sorry, next verse. 28. Read everybody. <laughs> 28. Next. Read one to go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> of the church, uh-huh. Which he purchased, what? With his own blood. Then, 32. Acts 20, the same chapter. Read now, want to go. Uh-huh. And what? To the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. It's okay. So what does that mean? The whole counsel of grace is the whole counsel of God. See, listen. I took my time to read scriptures. Verse by verse. Verse by verse. So that you cannot tell me that, um, you know, this pastor is choosing the Bible. Go home yourself. Read, carry the Bible and read. Listen, let me tell you that thing again. If two of us read the Bible together, hear me very carefully. This one that we challenge now. If me and Pastor Steve read this verse together, and he comes up with one revelation that is totally different from my revelation, then it means that two of us are either wrong or one of us is wrong. We cannot study scripture together and have different revelation. The scripture has only one interpretation. Only one interpretation. We may go deeper in the revelation, but it should have the same foundation. I hear what I'm telling you. So we cannot read this verse together and two of us come out with different revelation. Somebody is wrong. Somebody say, I have my own revelation. Nothing like that. I told you Jesus is the accurate and absolute revelation of the scriptures. When you want to read the Bible, look for Jesus in that scripture. Look for him. Look for what he has done in that verse. Listen, that's why I told you that you can read Old Testament, but it can become New Testament when you see Jesus in the Bible. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. So grace is the whole counsel of God. Is that, are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? So the word of his grace is the whole counsel of God that you need. It is the entire thing. So stop, stop being testy. I want something different. I want, stop being testy. Be planted in the grace of God. Hallelujah. Bible says, they that are planted in the house of God shall flourish in the court of our God. Can you shout amen? Acts 13 verse 8. The Bible says, look at proper Bible study again. We are doing Bible study now. Acts 13, Acts 13 verse 8. Read everybody want to go. Acts 13, 8. Sorry. Hebrews 13, 8. Everybody read want to go. Read. The way you are reading, eh? The way you are reading, I will stop my preaching. No? You are not responding. Read one to go. Uh huh. Where? 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 It should be established where? By grace. Continue. Ah, <laughs> uh, why? Why are you too fast? Go back. Are you voting together with us? Read again. Not with food which have not profited those. Message Bible. Let's read again. Hebrews, so if you don't understand that one, you understand it now. Message Bible. From verse 8. Sorry, TPT first. Let do, let do, let do TPT first. Hebrews 13, 8, TPT. I said verse 8. TPT, verse 8. Hebrews 13, 8, TPT. Please, who is the person on that screen that is delaying me like this? Who is the person there? Hebrews 13, 8, TPT. Who is the person that is there? I ask the question, who is the person there? Who is the person on that screen? Eh? So what, what, what's the problem? Why are you slow? You say, you say system now. <laughs> oh my God. Verse 8. Verse 8. Hebrews 13, 8. Now the guy now moved to Acts 9 again. I say Hebrews. I've been saying Hebrews 13 now for a minute. Oh my God. <laughs> Are you ready for verse 9? Not the one that I will say verse 9 now. You'll waste my time again. By the way, who is on that screen? 
Kenneth, what are you doing on that screen? Eh? What are you doing there? I, can we read now? I, is verse 9 ready? Not that I will read now, you caught me again. Because you are already cutting what I'm about to say. Are you ready now? Read everybody, want to go? Uh huh. When? Yesterday, today. That means the message does not change. The message is the same. Yesterday, today. And how long? Now, tip, uh, verse 9. Read now, want to go? So don't let anyone lead you astray. Uh huh. No verse, uh huh. Exotic teachings, uh huh. <laughs> it is more beautiful to feast on grace and be inwardly strengthened than to be obsessed with dietary rules, which in themselves have no lasting benefit. Message Bible, message Bible, now the same eight and nine. I'm, I'm going somewhere. <laughs> Kamalo Govahale, Me message Bible, Hebrews 13, message Bible, eight and nine. This guy now will slow me again for another five minutes. Slow me down. If you don't know how to use software, leave. Leave that, please. Thank you. Hebrews 13. Yeah, thank you. Verse 8 now. Okay. Uh, let's read from, for Jesus doesn't change. Are you ready now? Read one to go. For Jesus doesn't change. Yesterday, today, tomorrow. He is always totally what? Himself. Verse 9. Now read this one now. Want to go read? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Products named after Christ don't seem to do much for those who buy them. Should I tell you some products? Oh yeah, man too. Holy water. Products named after Christ. So I've prayed on this mantle. If you carry it, it will change your destiny. You will not carry it, put it on your head. You have gone back. You have gone back. Gone back to bondage. Say Christ is in me. Say the Holy Ghost dwells in me. Let me ask you a question. Some of you are looking at me, shocked. Let me ask you a question. Daniel, come. Which one do you want? The power of God inside and catch you? Or the power of God inside you? Which one do you want? Are you sure you don't want to catch you? Then the pastor will tell you, Brethren, my voice is cracked. I've prayed on this oil. If you use this oil, if you buy it. Products named after Christ don't seem to do much. I hear what I'm telling you. Somebody said the, the Holy Ghost is the anointing in the bottle. Holy Ghost inside oil. Have you ever bought the Yiyoa, uh, what they call that oil? Is it Goza Yiyoa oil? When you read the description, what they write there? Cooking. Maybe you want to cook your brain or cook your paper or cook your CV or cook your car. So I pour it, I pour only. The Bible says, where your feet march upon, you take over. You say in the name of the Lord Jesus, no devil comes around my area. No devil comes around my house. I take charge. No, no, look, hold on. Hold on. Where did you see in the Bible that Jesus used oil? To pray for any sick person. Let me shock you. When Jesus told the disciples to pray for the sick, you know what the disciples did? They took oil. They also they prayed over the sick with oil. Where did they learn it from? From Judaism. Jesus never taught them that. Every time Jesus healed person, he spoke the word or he laid his hands on them. That's all. Or he said, go and show yourself. Jesus never used holy water. What is holy water? Don't you realize that we are the holy children of God? That's who we are. Bible says, listen, the Bible, listen, listen. When Moses, when Moses saw a burning bush, hear me. When Moses saw a burning bush, hear me very well. He came before that burning bush. He saw fire, but no smoke, no consumption. So when he got close, a voice came out and said, take off your shoes for where you stand is holy ground. When Joshua was about to go for war, he saw a man with his son drawn. And he asked the man, are you for us or are you for against us? And the man said to him, I am the captain of the host of the Lord. He says, take off your shoes for where you stand is holy ground. Question, what did the ground do to become holy? Ten steps to become holy. What did the ground do to become holy? 
Because God said, not Moses, God said the ground is holy. So what is holiness then? When God's presence comes on any material, on any person, that person becomes holy. Because God cannot live in any place that is not holy. Say, I'm holy. Say, I'm holy. Say, I'm a saint. When Paul wrote to the Corinthian church with their stupidity, he said, I write to the saints in Corinth. Which, did, did you see the kind of sin they were doing? Father sleeping with, uh, with, 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 so, with family, cousins, all manners of sin. But he said, saint, to the saints in Corinth. Why? Because your holiness has nothing to do with your behavior. Are you hearing me? It means that we are on, holiness means we are uncommon. Say, I am uncommon. That's what, that's what it means. Holiness is not tying scarf or wearing long skirts. That is not holiness. You can still wear that thing and still be doing all the sin you want to do in this life. You can even wear hijab, cover your eye, but you are still living in sin. Shout amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Woo. Tell somebody, stay with the grace of God. Tell somebody, stay with God's grace. Now, next one. The church is not built on the gifts of the Spirit. Next one. The church is not built on the gift of the Spirit. Hear me very well. The church is built on the testimony of the grace of God. Now hear me. There is nothing wrong with the gift of the Spirit. We manifest the gift of the Spirit in this place, but there's nothing wrong with it. Are you hearing me? But that is not what the church is built on. The church is not built on the gift of the Spirit. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Listen, you are standing before a sure prophet. My wife is a prophetess, I'm telling you. But we don't market that one. You know why? Let me tell you why. When you market the gift of a prophet, you bring the attention to you. And then you don't push them to Jesus. The guy wants to travel. Then the prophet says, let me investigate the road. Google map. Let me Google map it and check whether it's time for you to go. Are you hearing me? You don't have brain again. God, the Holy Ghost cannot lead you again. Only the prophet will lead your life. Scam. Then, you see, the reason for that is for control. Manipulation. The prophet now tells you, I've met them. Me, I've met them. <laughs> Maybe you have not, but me, I've met. You say, you want God to change your destiny? You need to sow a seed. You know, let me tell you a story that happened to one, to one pastor. He went for a meeting. The pastor said that today, there's this rich man in church. We must collect money for him. Reuben, I hear. So now, he now said that, he told the pastor, he already wrote all the, I mean, your pastor knows you. You understand? But he's a guest minister. The guest minister doesn't know you. He has given the guest minister all the information about the man. So when the guy came to church, he said, who has this phone number? He called phone number. The man said, hey, it's me. It's me. He came forward. Abba, the guy said, today God has located me. Are you telling you? That's how the game, that's how I'm telling you true life story. That's how when they were done, the pastor now said, We need to do some projects. Who do you think was the first guy to come out to give money? They turned the gift of God to money. You think you can buy the gift of God? It doesn't work that way. And you have to run from those things. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. That makes the members depend on you, not depend on the Lord. Say, I have the Holy Spirit. The job of the pastor is to show you to Christ. It's to show you to the Holy Ghost. It's to show you how to be able by yourself to address issues, to deal with devils, to deal with situations by yourself. You don't have to look for a pastor's number by 2 a.m. A demon is pressing you in the night. You look for a pastor's number. No, 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 no. You address that devil yourself. That's why we are teaching you the word. Are you what I'm telling you? That's why you stay with the word until you are established in the grace of God. So that by yourself, you can start praying. You know what we said this morning? Say, I heal the sick. Say it now. Say, I heal the sick. Say, I raise the dead. Say, miracles don't retire Jesus. Miracles don't retire me. That's supposed to be your normal life every day because we are living in the supernatural. Say, I'm in the supernatural. Say again, say, I'm in the supernatural. Now, let me tell you one more thing again. The accuracy of the prophecy does not make it legitimate. Let that one set to inside you. The accuracy of the prophecy does not make it legitimate. Let me tell you something. Even Amadioa can say something that will come to pass. 
anybody with any devil can see anything and it will come to pass. Are you what I'm telling you? So stop it. Stop it. Can I build my ministry on telling people who is the next president? All the people that say the next president is one. We watch, we saw all of them. All the prophesying. Prophesying about the next president. How is your some of them is not a plain blue blah 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 blue. They'll tell us eh, if he wins this will happen. They not they can't come straight. Is that our ministry now to be talking about the president who we saw in the election or who won the football match? Tell somebody we have a more sure word of prophecy. That's what you know. Peter said, We have seen Jesus in his manifested glory. He said, We have seen it all. He said, But I come to tell you, we have a more sure word of prophecy. And what is that more sure word? The gospel, the word of his grace, is the more sure word because prophecies will fail. How many of you they will have they will in your life before it not come to pass? Plenty of times. Even the pastor that is the prophet can say something not come to, come to pass. Even God that prophesies is not all his prophecies that came to pass. So who are you? But there's one thing that will never fail is the word of his grace. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? And that's what we're building you on. Look at Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy 13. I must finish this message today. Deuteronomy 13. These guys don't slow me down. Deuteronomy 13 verse 1 to 3. Read everybody want to go. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and he gives you a sign and a wonder. Next verse. And the sign. Next verse. Verse 2 quickly guys move. And the sign or the wonder comes to pass. Uh huh. Continue. Of which he spoke to you saying let us go after other gods which you have not known and let us serve him. What should you do? Verse 3. Read everybody. One, two, go read. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. Why? Tell somebody, Jesus is the surest thing. Naive sure pass. So the prophet came to tell you a prophecy. It came to pass. But what was the motive? To draw you away from Jesus. He says, don't listen to him, don't follow him. Are you hearing me? So even the Bible acknowledges that even a fake prophet, prophecy can come to pass. Doesn't make it legitimate. I told you, you check the message. That's how you validate the prophet. You check his message. You check his message. What is he teaching? What is he preaching? What is his focus? What is his motive? Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 11 to 12. It says, and... And he himself gave to us some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Why? It's not for prediction. What is the purpose? For the equipping of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For what? For the edifying of the body of Christ. Because prophecies will fail. But the word of his grace cannot fail. So the word of his grace cannot fail. Daniel 13, 11 verse 32. Read everybody want to go. Those who do wickedly against the covenant shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out what? Now, I wanted to mark three words there. No, be, do. Or carry out. Carry out. What's the first word? No. If you guys can mark it, mark it. No, uh-huh. Be, uh-huh. So the believer, we don't go out doing great exploits. What we do first is to know our God and then we'll become strong. Are you seeing that? Once we know our God and we become strong, we do great exploits. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I prophesy to you today, you will do great exploits. That amen is on wheelchair. I said you will do great exploits. You are going to do great exploits in your life in the name of Jesus. I said you are going to do great exploits. In your life in the name of Jesus. You know, Paul fell on that man. The Bible says, as he fell on him, something fell on that man. Paul fell on him, and life fell on that man. In the name of the Lord Jesus, life is falling in your house. Life is falling in your business. Life is falling in your ministry. Life is falling in your home right now. In the name of Jesus. We wanted to like, share, and let others know about this message has blessed you and to touch your life. Blessings.